Good morning everyone, Gadgen here again for another first look and in this episode we're going to take a look at the Fujifilm X-A7. Let's get into it. Welcome back everyone and before I talk about the camera I have to say about 80% of you watching are not subscribed to the channel yet. So if you're into these first looks, if you're into reviews, if you're into tutorials, do consider subscribing to the channel, you will not be disappointed. Now with that out of the way, let's talk about the Fujifilm X-A7. Announced a little over a month ago and just entering the North America market, this camera is quite the polar opposite of what the Fuji X-Pro3 is. Where that camera skews more toward a purist mentality, this is designed for the mobile photographer, for those of you that use your camera phone to capture most of your content. Now, looking at this market, Fujifilm has designed something where it would be an easy transition moving from a mobile device into a mirrorless camera. If you look at the back of the X-A7, it's almost entirely screen. It's a 16 by nine aspect ratio, which more closely resembles a mobile device screen. It's fully articulating and one of the brightest displays on a Fuji camera. Further, there's no viewfinder on this camera. It's just the screen. This is what you're using to capture your content. And for those of you that have been using your iPhone or Android device to capture your pictures and images when you travel or for fun, you're gonna be used to something like this. But it doesn't stop there. The X-A7 has introduced a bit of a fork in the road when it comes to user interface in the Fujifilm ecosystem. You see, if you've used any one of their enthusiast or pro systems before, you're familiar with how their layout and display looks in their menu system. When you're looking at the X-A7 though, when you're in that traditional view of capturing content, you're met with a lot of these mobile friendly icons and gestures. And the reason I bring this up is that if you're more familiar with photography and video work in the mirrorless world, this can be a little jarring. You look at this and it's a little confusing, but it isn't designed for someone like myself. It's more for someone that's moving again from a camera phone up to a mirrorless system. It's designed to make that transition easier. So when you're looking at depth of field, for example, instead of just having an aperture value, you're met with shallower or more focus. It's a touch gesture with icons to communicate what the image is going to look like. Looking at the rest of the camera, you do have a built-in pop-up flash that you can use, and I would suggest aiming it in a different direction than your subject if you really wanna get some interesting images. And the rest of the design as well, it just looks like it's matured a little bit, a little bit sleeker, if you will. It's a great looking device that complements well, a lot of people that'd be interested in a camera like this. The grip itself has been improved a little bit. I mean, if you have these large lobster cracking hands, it might not be the perfect fit, but for anyone, again, moving from a mobile device, this is gonna be way more ergonomic. Now, this is an aggressively priced camera, well under $1,000. But for that, there are a few concessions that have been made. You're getting a bare sensor, not Fuji's X-Trans sensor that they pioneered, but in all intents and purposes, the people that are looking at this camera are not gonna care about that. The differences in that sensor technology may not even be noticeable to them. And while you might lose on certain things such as low light performance, such as some of the film simulations, there's still enough value here for someone that's considering their first mirrorless camera. The camera itself has a single SD card slot and it has a 2.5 millimeter mic jack as well as USB-C. Further to this, the camera can shoot up to six frames per second. It has considerably better low light performance than your mobile device, and it can shoot 4K footage up to 30p. I chose to bring this camera along on a recent photo shoot at a fashion show to capture behind the scenes, these casual candid shots that you'd normally capture on a mobile device. Now, when I was using it, it was a little bit tricky. You almost had to rethink how you use the camera. But as I relinquished a little bit more control to the camera, it performed better in my eyes. It sounds weird, but it's one of those things where as you trust the camera more, it provided better results. I even gave this camera to one of my assistants and said, hey, go and just shoot with this thing and capture what you can. Someone that's never used a device like this before. And it continued to impress. You're gonna get those Fuji colors, those famous Fuji film simulations. Famous Fuji film simulations. 
Anyways, the shots that we got were really compelling. They were rich, they had more texture, they had more depth. Again, noticeably better than a mobile device. And this is really the driving point of this camera. For that person that is great at mobile photography, that really pushes that to the limit and is looking to get a mirrorless camera, their first mirrorless camera, maybe for street photography, maybe for travel, maybe for food, maybe for vlogging, whatever it may be. For someone that doesn't wanna rely on post-processing, they wanna be able to get a great shot in the moment, send it to their mobile device, post it on Instagram. For someone that wants to be able to shoot some video and edit it on their iPad, a solution like the Fuji X-A7 is extremely compelling, especially at its price point. And while it doesn't provide all the innovations and features in the Fuji ecosystem, there's still a ton of value here for someone that's looking to go deeper into content creation or simply take a better selfie. Fujifilm has uniquely positioned a camera that's specifically targeted for those that ask themselves, what is the first mirrorless camera I should get? And while many people out there will upgrade their mobile device every year or every other year simply because of a better camera, I'd venture to argue a system like this might be a much better investment. Thank you so much for watching the video. Again, let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think that there's a better first time mirrorless solution? I'd love to hear it. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you know when a new video comes out. My name's Gadgen, and I'll see you next time.